Hi everyone and welcome back. I'm Heather Noble and today I will be showing you a second way to work with two colors in the same row of mosaic overlay crochet without anchoring your stitches. I also have a video showing color change using anchored stitches. Check it out if you prefer that method. Here's a sample of the monogram placemat that we're going to be making today. I'm going to be using different colors, but this is the idea of what it will look like when it's finished. It's my gingham placemat uh, pattern that I've used my Denelian font alphabet to make the monogram letters in the center. So if you've already purchased both of those designs, you could make this yourself although it's a little tricky to figure out. Uh, you need to make an outline around the letter so it sticks out against the plaid pattern background. Um, but it's totally doable if you don't want to spend extra money buying the monogram design. So just letting you know that up front that it's my current Denelian alphabet font and my gingham placemat design. I wanted to show you today we're going to work on color changing two colors in the same row but we're not going to anchor our stitches so this is a little different from the first color change video where i anchored all the stitches and i just want to show you on the back because i've started the color at the end of the row you're not seeing um, tails in the middle of the work so that looks very neat if i zoom up a little bit you'll be able to see that I do carry the color up one row occasionally to bury the yarn in the rows. And so there is a little bit more of a look on the back where you can see small amounts of the yarn being carried. But honestly, I, I don't think it looks messy at all. I think it still looks very polished and finished. So this once again is a preference for each crocheter, whether they like to anchor or not anchor their stitches. I personally think it looks neater if it's anchored, but I hate anchoring. It slows me down, it's extra wrist movement, and my arthritis tends to flare up sooner when I'm working uh, with anchored stitches all the way through. Uh, so there's a number of reasons why I personally don't enjoy the process of anchoring, but I like the look of anchoring. So it's a struggle uh, and it's a personal preference up to you. So I just wanted to show you a second way of doing the color change so that you have options. Um, of course, there are many other options available. Other designers have put uh, videos out there. Go ahead, check everything out and decide what works best for you. I just wanted to give you another option. I've gotten a lot of questions about the app that I use to uh, work with my charts on my iPad. This app is called Knit Companion. I didn't try it for quite a while because of the word knit. I wasn't aware that it would work also with crochet, but it works really brilliantly with uh, the crochet chart and also the crochet written patterns. And I'm going to give you just a quick overview of why I like it because I do talk about it quite a bit. So this is the pattern we'll be working on today and I have already um, worked the pattern up to the spot where the color change is yesterday so that I'd be ready to go today. And then when I opened my app today, uh, my highlight bar and my red placement marker here was already in place. It hadn't changed at all, even though I had gone out of the app and worked on other patterns in the meantime. So I like that I can switch between multiple projects and it will keep my place. I like that I have a highlighter bar that I can move up and down the row so I can keep track really easily of where I'm at in the pattern. I like that there is a vertical line that I can move across to the actual stitch that I'm on so that if I need to look away from the project or if I'm counting a certain section, I can uh, keep track of it really easily with this bar, just move it with my finger. This red bullseye um, is a place marker. So these highlighter bars and the vertical bars are really easy to move with your fingers and it's really easy to like just accidentally knock it off the row and be like oh where was i but this red bullseye you have to hold your finger for a couple seconds in order to move it so right now it's on row 13 i need to remember that's where i'm at but let's say i want to move it to row 10. so i just hold my finger for a second and it moves it to row 10. 
and then um, I know that that's a place I want to remember. It doesn't accidentally bump out of place. You have to hold your finger for a, a while, just like a second or two in order for it to move. So it has to be more of an intentional uh, touch on the screen and hold it um, so that you don't accidentally bump it out of place. So I really like that feature. I want to get out of this pattern and show you a multiple page pattern um, so that you can see how I like to work with some of my larger charts. So here's one of my dog patterns. If you look up here at this uh, area of the screen, you can see that there are five pages across in this section of the pattern. And you just tap on the page that you want to see and it switches it down below to that page so that you can just move across your pattern without having you know, a full thing of sheets of paper in front of you that can get in the way and get messed up and whatever. And also you can keep track of where you are in the pattern with the highlighter bar. So I just really like the versatility of this program a lot. Uh, a couple of other things that I like, um, this button right here pulls up a notes section so I can keep track of like in, for instance, in this pattern, Let's say I'm using um, an F size hook because I'm using my Stylecraft Special DK yarn. That's the size hook I like to use with it. So I would I would keep a note of which hook size and maybe Stylecraft and oh I just spelled that wrong Stylecraft and then I would even use you know, the names of the yarn or something like that. And it just is something that I can pull up so that if I'm working on multiple projects, I have all of my notes right there of, you know, where I'm at in the project and what tools and yarn I'm using. So I just I really like a lot of things about this. If I go out of the place where I'm working on my current patterns called local, it also has a section called Ravelry, so you can directly hook it to your Ravelry account and anything that you've purchased in Ravelry will come up uh, automatically. So all of the patterns that I've purchased are right there. And then it also works with Dropbox. So if you have a PDF file, for instance, I send my pattern testers uh, PDF files of the section that they're testing and they can drag them into their own Dropbox account and then um, those PDFs will come up as well. So let's say I'm working on um, like here's the Schnauzer test and all the parts of that are right there and I can just pull up that as well. So super easy once you've worked with it a little while it becomes pretty intuitive. Um, and I just really like it a lot. So that's a quick overview of Knit Companion and why I like to use it. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the non-anchored overlay crochet method and why I will be varying the color changes the way that I am today. So let's just take a really look at the mechanics of how overlay works. So if you're new to mosaic overlay, um, you'll find out that there are two colors that alternate every row. Uh, typically you stay with two colors. Uh, we're getting fancy by adding a third color with a tapestry technique. Um, when you do the double crochets over the top of the single crochet, it creates an extra thickness. But it also, if you're not anchoring, it pulls away. It does not attach to the row behind it. So when I'm working a third color and carrying it through the row, there's not a way when I'm working a double crochet to bury the, the third color because there's not an attachment there to catch the thread or to catch the yarn. So I'll be showing you that more in detail, but that is why when we're not anchoring the stitch why we have to do it uh, this method. I'm sure there are other ways too, but why today we'll be doing it this method. For today's sample, I am using a new to me brand of yarn that I found at a Michaels recently called Impeccable. I'll be using uh, this color Smoke for color A and white for color B and then misty blue for color C. Um, 
it is a medium weight yarn and it calls for a five millimeter hook so I'm going to be using my H tulip hook that's five millimeters and I've already worked up the the pattern all the way to the color change row so if you look here at the beginning of the row let me move the highlighter bar just a little bit you can see that at the beginning of the row I have A and C listed as my colors and A is the first color of the row so that's the color that I will attach first so I'm going to start with a border stitch inserting my hook under both loops and grab my color A Oh, shook the camera there. Grab my color A, pull up a loop and chain one, and then insert my hook under both loops again. This is where I would complete the border stitch with a single crochet, but before I do that, I'm going to attach my third color C. I'm going to lay it across my hook and then going over the top of it with color A, I'm going to just tack it into place with a single crochet. So it's not really attached really well. You can still pull it through, but it is tacked into place there. In this row where I am first introducing my third color, I have uh, single crochet stitches across the entire row, but if you look, it starts with color A, and then here, well, I have a bold line every 10 stitches, so I'm able to say 10, 20, and then 5 stitches. So at stitch 25, I'm going to switch to color C right here, and then I'm going to switch back to color A, and then switch back to color C. They're all um, in single crochet stitches, so I'll be able to bury the other color along this entire row. I don't have any double crochet stitches um, to make it tricky for this row. So I'm just going to start. I have my two colors attached at the border stitch, and I'm going to start with color A, and I'm going to hold color C right at the back loop here. Let me uh, zoom in just a little bit here going to hold color A right at the back loop and when I pick up the back loop for my back loop single crochet I'm going to also work under color C and this will bury it in the single crochet so I'm going to work 25 stitches and each stitch I will bury the other color behind and I will meet you when I get at stitch number 25 Okay, I've just completed 24 single crochets and I am at the stitch right before I need my uh, color C to begin. And so in the stitch right before it, that's where I change my color. So I'm going to start a regular back loop single crochet, pull up a loop, and then I'm going to drop color A, pick up color C, and pull that through my final pull through of that single crochet. And that finishes the stitch for the 25th one and has the color C ready for the next stitch. So then I have four single crochets and I'm going to pull color A to the back loop here so that I can work underneath it and work four single crochets, two, three. Now this fourth one I need to change back my color to color A so I'm going to pull up a loop, drop color C, pick up color A, and pull it through that final loop pull through. So I've switched from color A to color C and back to color A. So now I have four single crochets in color A. So I've pulled my color C back up to the back loop here to work underneath it, as well as the back loop for my single crochet. So one, two, three, 
Here's the fourth one where I need to change back to color C. So I'm going to pull up a loop, drop that color, pick up color C for the final pull through. And then I have six single crochets in color C. Two, three, four, five. Here's the sixth one where I'm going to change back to color A. So I'm going to drop color C, pick up color A, move color C to the back loop. And now the rest of it is finishing in single crochets color A. So I'm going to finish out the row and I'll meet you at the end of the row to show you what that looks like. I've completed the first row of adding a third color. You can see, I'm holding it right underneath the pattern, you can see where I have, um, because it's been single crochet, I've been able to bury the third color the entire length of the row. So I'm going to go ahead and do the next row off camera because it's just uh, color B and there is nothing to, to do with the color change. So I'm just going to go ahead and get that done and I'll come back for the next row where we have um, some double crochets introduced and I'll show you how to work with the color change there. Okay, I'm at the next row that uses two colors in the same row. I've attached both colors at the end, like I did before, and I've worked the first 22 stitches in color A over the top of color C, so it's buried along the whole row. Now the thing to remember in this technique is that we're going to bury the other color under all the single crochets, and it will be just a strand that's left behind the double crochets that we'll take care of in the next row up. So we are about ready to start stitch number 23, which is where I'll change to color C to get ready for that next section. So I'm going to start my single crochet under the back loop and color C, pull up a loop, drop color A and pick up color C to change color. Hold color A next to the back loop to work underneath it. And then I have two single crochets and four double crochets in color C. So I'm going to bury color A when I can under the single crochets. And then I have four double crochets. Now since I'm not anchoring, I'll just have this strand kind of loose behind it. One. Two. three. Now this is where it's a little bit tricky too because I have to change to color A here. So I've started the first part of my double crochet. Let me take that out so that I can show you a little slower. I have one more double crochet to go but I also have to change my color. So I always change in the final pull through of the stitch. So let's start the double crochet. So you're going to yarn over Insert your hook like normal, pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through two. Now here's the final one, so you're going to drop color C, pick up color A, yarn over and do the final pull through. So now you've changed your color and you've got your four double crochets. So now I have two single crochets in color A. So since it's a single crochet, I'm going to bury the other color with it. One. Now this is a single crochet, whoops, a single crochet here, but I'm also changing color. So I'm going to start the single crochet in color A, drop color A, pick up color C for the final pull through of that single crochet. So now I have 
two single crochets and six double crochets and then two single crochets in color C. We're going to bury when we can with a single crochet. So pull that strand of color A up next to your back loop so you can bury it. So two single crochets and then this strand will lay loose behind the double crochets. We have six double crochets here. One, two, three. I never know how many stitches to show before you guys get bored watching me do the same stitch over and over again, or if it's useful. So if I'm boring you, I apologize. If it's useful, yay. Here's my sixth double crochet. Now I have two single crochets and I'm going to make sure I have that strand. So see how it's just going to lay behind here exposed? And you don't want to pull it too tight because that will mess with your tension. Um, so that's something you'll kind of figure out as you go what the right tension is, but I just keep it fairly loose so that I can pull it up to the next row when I'm ready to bury it in the next row. But anyway, I have two single crochets, so I'm going to pick it up with this single crochet and bury it here. One. Now with the second single crochet, I have to switch colors again. So I'm going to start the single crochet with color C, pull up a loop, drop color C, pick up color A for the final pull through. And then I have single crochets with color A for the remainder of the row. So I will show you this row when I get to the end. Okay, I've completed the row. I've used all of my single crochet stitches in this row to bury these, the third color or the second color, depending on which one I was on. Um, and then the back I wanted to show you, the areas where there are double crochets, you see there's an exposed strand of yarn that we'll need to bury in the next row. So when I was first starting to work with this kind of technique, I would put a stitch marker in at the beginning of these areas so that when I'm working on the other side, I remember to pick up the strand and bury it. Um, with this smaller project, I don't think I need to do that. I think I'll remember. But when I was working on something larger, like a, when I was doing the giraffe blanket, I used this technique. And I used stitch markers because there were uh, a lot of times where I would be working along and forget to bury a strand and then I'd have to frog back and catch it again. So uh, so that would be my recommendation as you're starting this. If it's new to you is maybe use a stitch marker to help you remember where those areas are to bury. So let's look at the next row. I'm going to use color B which is white in this case. So I'm going to hold my finger to move my bullseye up so I know where that row is. And I have color B. Just a reminder, a border stitch works under both loops. So you pull up a loop and chain one insert your hook under the same two loops in that stitch and work a single crochet and then I have nine single crochets I'm going to work this section up to the color change area and I'll meet you when I get there okay I've worked across the row to the area where there's a color change and we've had the strand left behind the double crochets that's exposed and so we need to bury it in this row. So if you're looking at the chart you can see here is the highlighted row that I'm on and the first if I look below my row one row down I know that I have two single crochets below it there I've already buried color C because it was a single crochet in that row. 
but then when I got to the double crochets I couldn't bury it so above the double crochets in this row that I'm working is where I need to bury color C and in mosaic overlay crochet you, you're never gonna have a double crochet on top of a double crochet you'll always be able to bury it with a single crochet in this technique so let's go ahead and get started I have two stitches that have that I don't have to worry about burying because they were a single crochet underneath. So there's the first two. Now I have four stitches on top of double crochet. So let's take a look and see. Yep, there is my strand that I need to catch. So I'm going to insert my hook for the single crochet under the back loop and catch the strand of color. Well, that's color A that I'm catching to bury. So I'm going to catch it four times. There's one, two, three, four. So if you look at the back, you can see a little bit where I've showed you there's going to be a slight uh, carry thread that you'll be able to see. Um, I don't think it makes the back look bad, but just be aware that you'll be able to see just a slight little stitch mark there. So then I have two double crochets. Now I have 10 stitches. But if you look below that row, you'll see there's two. Oops. Well, I had just bumped my finger in the wrong spot and it took me down to the bottom of my page and I couldn't figure out where it went, but I found it again. <laughs> okay, so where was I? Here I was showing you that in this row, if you look below the first two stitches, I'm working over a single crochet. So I've already buried the color in these two stitches and in these two stitches, but in these six double crochets below my row, I'll have an exposed thread that I'll need to bury. See it right here? So let's work the first two single crochets without worrying about that extra thread. And now I have six single crochets where I'm gonna to have to pick up this and bury it. So I'll work under the back loop and pick up color A behind it. One, two, three. See how I'm picking up both the back loop and the third color? Four, five, and six. That takes care of that thread. And now I have two single crochets where I don't have to worry about burying because they're on top of another single crochet. So now I'm going to finish out the rest of my row and I'll show you when I get to the end. Okay, I finished the row. This is what the front side looks like. And on the back you can see that I have used the single crochet stitches to bury the thread that was left over from the row before. So that is basically how to do the color change technique when you don't use an anchored stitch. And I hope that answers any questions you might have. Here is, again, what it looks like finished. And a look at the back side. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.